I've heard from millions of Americans who say they're skeptical about the president's push to nationalize aspects of health care. Uh, some of the most concerned are parents of children with special needs. My next guest is a son with cystic fibrosis. This is Gunnar Hawkins. He's five and a half months old. She says that the health care reform plans working its way through Congress could deny her son the care he needs, and she's headed to Washington to carry that message. Then she is live, in fact, near the Hill. Kristen Hawkins, Executive Director of Students for Life of America. How are you, Kristen, and good morning to you. I, uh, you, you say something that I think is really stunning. You go so far as to say that nationalized health care would mean the difference between life and death. That's strong. Explain that. Well, sure, Bill. Thanks for having me on. Well, as anyone with cystic fibrosis or any family member with cystic fibrosis will understand, um, access to doctors at a moment's notice is very important for people suffering with cystic fibrosis. Um, as we've learned with the nationalized health care systems in Great Britain and Canada and the like, a nationalized health care severely uh, reduces your access to see doctors uh, because of long wait lines and because of financial restraint. Uh, so by Gunner not seeing doctors when he needs to see them, uh, it would dramatically lower his life expectancy. For example, when he was diagnosed in March with CF, if we had not gone to the doctors uh, within the next week to a specialist who could, who could give us the medicine he needed, he would have been very, um, very much in trouble because he was severely underweight. And if we had to have waited six to 12 months to see a doctor, I don't know what would have happened. So to your, him. your point is that your options would be limited, and thus infecting potentially the health of your son. I, why are you convinced of that, Kristen? Well, my husband and I, Jonathan, we started researching after Gunnar's diagnosis uh, care for cystic fibrosis patients in the United States and abroad. Uh, and we found some very startling statistics coming out of Great Britain today in Ireland, both of which have nationalized health care systems. In Ireland, for example, the life expectancy for a CF patient is 10 years younger. It's 27 as opposed to the U.S. 37. Well, you make a compelling case here. But did you hear President Obama in Chicago last month? On June 23rd, he was there. He was citing a few examples. Uh, Children's Hospital in Cincinnati, Ohio. The quality of mm -hmm. care for cystic fibrosis patients shot up after the hospital changed its program and started incorporating suggestions from parents. He, he also mm -hmm. cited a, a health care center in Tallahassee, Florida, where the deaths were dramatically reduced with a rapid response team that monitored the patient's uh, condition around the clock. Uh, to me, in words anyway, that doesn't sound like a plan from the White House that wants to harm children like yours. But that wasn't the White House making those changes, it, especially in the case of Cincinnati. It was parents and doctors making the decision at Cincinnati, look at the re, looking at the research they have gathered uh, to other CF centers, knowing that ne they need to make a change. And also in May, President Obama in a New York Times article said that the chronically ill and the people towards the end of their lives account for 80 percent of all health care costs and that there were some difficult and democratic uh, conversations that are going to have to take place to provide guidance as to who would receive uh, the, the expense of life-sustaining care. That to me is a very scary statement coming from our commander. In Kristen, are you, are you satisfied with the coverage and the care that your son gets today? Yes, I am. Emphatically, 100 percent. Don't change a thing. No, I think there, there are changes that can be made, but I am very confident that between myself and my health insurance provider that we can work out something that works to give Gunner the most effective treatment. And we're not saying that health care is, is perfect, because we all know there needs to be some changes. But we need to be considering those people with disabilities and making sure a health care system that we pass isn't going to ration care to people with disabilities because of cost. You make an interesting case. Kristen, thank you for your time. I know you're presenting a letter to members of Congress starting this week, and we'll see the fallout from that. Kristen Hawkins, thank you for your time. Thank you. In Washington by way of West Virginia this morning. Megan? Well, even wild horses.